What's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. So check it out. It's been almost exactly a year since I 3D printed my own plastic bushings for this here Delta. So this is an original Rostock. I built it probably four years ago now since another year already went by. Maybe even slightly longer. Um, and I've been upgrading it slowly and doing all sorts of things with it. Of course I've been building a new OSD oversized delta out of aluminum, extruded aluminum, and that's a whole nother project. Check it out. So what I wanted to talk about is I put three different type, three different type, excuse me, of lubricants on these bushings. The bushings are PLA, just regular PLA. Um, I believe it came from um, um, what is it, Smart Saint? So it's just regular white PLA. Um, and I've been printing all kinds of things similar to this cube right here. And as you can see, I've been learning how to do bridging for the first time ever, actually. I've never played with bridging. I need a different slicer to do so, so I'm playing with it. It's pretty cool. But this white PLA uh, is what I'm running right now, and it's what these were made out of. So what I want to do is I want to just show you guys what these look like. So printing things like this really make the printer jump around a lot. And if you can't see, the printer is actually moving. If you look at it closely, it's physically moving. So I have the printer sitting on these little rubber things. And what are these, you may ask? To be honest with you, I don't really know what they are. They almost look like gaskets from an uh, injector, to be honest with you. I don't even know what they're made out of. They're very stretchy, and they're very fat. And what I've done is I've taken three of these, and I've placed them under this printer. So I can literally rock this printer as it's sitting here, and it's just it's just bouncing around on this uh, on these three little rubber things so that sort of helps dampen some of the stress on these actual ends um, another note is that these actually have the original bearings on them still and they are basically they they started digging into the rods not real great so these are actually the same way they're hitting those notches and eventually um, became pretty smooth so like I said it's been almost a year and I'm going to give you some close-ups and discuss, um, you know, which one of these is, uh, did the best, basically. All right, well, this cube is almost done, so, well, we might as well let it finish. But um, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I'll be speaking about this bridging, hopefully, in another video. The plan never always comes to plan. But once this stops, we're going to shut it off, and we're going to find out which one of these was the best. All right, let's shut this thing off. Another cube successfully printed. I'm really excited about this uh, this bridging because I've never spent the time to do it. Of course, I had to support the bottom bottom because it didn't have anything to bridge to really. But man, that's so cool. I'm behind on the bridging technique because I was always stuck with the K slicer slicer and it doesn't really do bridging quite quite nicely. But anyway, back to what we were doing. Uh, so. Let's go ahead. I've turned the machine off. Let's go ahead and look at this. All right, a little bit closely. So what I want to do is I want to be able to get everything in this shot. That's pretty good, actually. So I want to just, when well, this is going to be hard to see because everything else is moving, but I wanted to show you this slop that's right here. Okay, most of this slop that you see, especially if I wiggle it from... Uh, can't really get in the camera away, but if I wiggle it uh, up here, you can really see this movement. And a lot of that has to do with the, the slop in these. Uh, and these. This one back here seems to have the most slop out of all of them. So let me get you some close-ups of each one of these. Okay, I'm going to start out with the best one first, or my opinion, the best one. So this had silicone on it. So the way I'm going to check these is just by rocking them back and forth. You can see there's not much play in there. As you can tell. So let's try a different one. All right, you have to excuse me for the bad, uh, the bad shot here. I'll try to pull this out of the way. But um, I just want to rock this. So this one, you can see how much plays in this one. This one had the... Um, had the uh, the grease 
That was four lubricating air fittings, air hose lines. So there's quite a bit of play in that one. Like a lot, actually. Not too much, but plenty for the precision that we need. So let's try the third one. All right, and for the third one, this one had the baby ointment on it. And you can see it actually did pretty well, but it has about as much slop as... Uh, I'm rocking the whole thing like this, so you have to ignore that. But I'm looking at the side-to-side -side motion, because this is really what this comes from. So if I move the end effector, you know, like this, twist it, you can see it's moving. And that movement is what gives all the slack. Let me get you a better view of that, actually. All right, so what I want you to watch is the movement of this versus the movement of that up there. That right there it's moving it forward and backward too but you see that movement so anyway point being it needs to be fixed so I really really like this one uh, the most I think mainly because there's nothing here so if I rub this there's ointment I can see it on my finger still got a little bit of ointment on there and if I rub this one it's also shiny. I've still got ointment on there. I'm going to use a different finger. But if I rub this one, there's just nothing there. But um, it slides the best. This one in the back actually gets stuck sometimes when it sits here for a while. This one gets stuck. This one does a tiny bit, but not as bad as, as these two. So I'm going to use the silicone. Now, somebody mentioned in that video when I made this originally that they make silicone paste. Um, which could even be a better option. The reason I don't like uh, the ointment or the, the, you know, the stuff where this is, you spray it on here and it sort of disappears, is because the hair and the dust and the dirt really like to stick to those and not so much to this one because you can sort of wipe it off. Now, I did not apply anything extra to this. It's been like this the entire life of these bushings which has been a year and I printed quite a lot in a year all right well um, for the next um, revision of what I'm gonna do here is as you saw in some of the footage I've got some cracks on some of the pieces and how they connect and I need to rework those and these were printed on um, this printer actually but uh, these sections right here were printed when the things were had a lot of slop in them and now they have a little bit of slop in them again so I'm going to print these again as one solid piece, but this time on the bushing, I'm going to put a place where I can tighten uh, and sort of make a clamp, and I can actually adjust how tight that they are on here. Because right now, if I could adjust them, then I could do that, and I could just tighten them up, and we'd be on our way. They'd last for even a lot longer than a year. I was neglected towards putting on plastic bushings of any kind, more or less my own 3D printed ones. And after I've done so, I'm actually quite happy about the fact that they've lasted this long. And even now, they're okay, but in these prints, especially the ones where they're moving around a lot, you can see all the jitters. See the jitters that they get? That has to do with it being small also. But all these little jitters, that actually has to do with the fact that this has a bunch of slop in it. Um, so, I don't know. Um, I'm going to be using silicone spray though on all the new ones and when I get these parts finished, designed and installed, um, I will make a video about it and let you guys know how that worked out for me. So if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, anything else, let me know. Other than that, God bless you guys. Have a good day and I'll see you another day. It's pretty cool to see this thing rock like this. I'm not afraid to break it either because these things are just that squishy. Now, if you cannot find these, there's one other place you can find them. Take apart some old CD ROM drives, DVD ROM drives, and you'll find out they have little silicone bushings in them. You can cut those in half and use them for this purpose. That's what I used to use until I found these. Bye.